What do you think the risks are that we'll go into a period of stagflation or even worse, some sort of depression? Well, I think the risk of stagflation, uh, it's almost like a case of, it's no longer a risk, it's a reality. Uh, interestingly, I wrote an article in December, in my, uh, I write at the end of the year, sort of a forecast of what is going to be the big issue for the coming year, and I say stagflation is, the, is, is going to be the issue. Uh, the reason is, you know, it's pretty clear, uh, high oil, uh, oil prices, uh, with the bringing together of oil and food, uh, the uh, biofuels, I mean, high food prices. Uh, we in the advanced industrial countries are relatively lucky because food and energy are only a fraction of our market basket. And so the inflationary impact is limited, but if you're in a developing country, food and energy is it. And so these countries are facing real inflationary pressures. Many of them are following the misguided doctrines of inflation targeting. Even though it's imported inflation, they're told respond by raising interest rates. If they follow that misguided wisdom, uh, that will mean that they will face not only inflation, because it won't stop the inflation very much, but what it will do, raising interest rates, it will cause a major recession. Mm. So I think uh, th this is not a pretty picture. Mm. The Federal Reserve is pumping liquidity in. Some people are worried about them creating a moral hazard, another version of the Greenspan put. What would you have done if you were the the Federal Reserve Chairman facing... Well, first, they have done it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think they are... Uh, the way they have done it has been totally irresponsible uh, because they are creating a, a very serious moral hazard problem. Uh, they needed to come and rescue the financial system. Absolutely no doubt about that. Uh, uh, Bernanke is very aware of the role of the collapse of the financial system in the Great Depression doesn't want to bear it on his shoulders, and so he's doing everything he can. Uh, but he is paying less attention to uh, the issues of incentives going forward. He's paying less attention to the moral issues of, of why should American taxpayers put their money at risk for people who obviously not only gambled, gambled other people's money, and are walking off with millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. And if there's some anger in American people, you can understand why there's some anger. It's, you know, these guys were very well compensated for mismanaging risk, which the American taxpayer is now picking up. So what should you have done? Actually, very simple. Um, for instance, consider the Bear Stearns bailout. Uh, that should have gone ahead. But rather than paying that $250 million to the shareholders of Bear Stearns, Put that money in escrow. If it turns out that when all is said and done, the, the balance sheet works out, uh, they don't have the liabilities that so many people in the market think, they don't have so many bad subprime mortgages that are going bankrupt, and there's money left over, they should get it. But on the other hand, if it turns out that uh, what the market thinks is correct, and Bear Stearns is, is really in very bad shape, and the insurance policy before the American taxpayers asked to pick up the tab, the owners of Bear Stearns should be asked to give up everything. That would be addressing the problem of moral hazard. Uh, even though they are walking off with a lot less than they had a year ago, or even a one month ago, or a week ago, they shouldn't be allowed to walk away with anything so long as America's taxpayers are at risk. Mm. Uh, do you think there's a risk still that um, even with the Bear Stearns bailout we could see more of these um, financial crises and a, a cascading effect through the global financial system? Definitely, definitely. And in fact, I mean, I can tell you uh, rumors that I hear from Wall Street say, say that this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, but, uh, one doesn't know which is uh, the next bank. I, I, I think uh, you know. I have my my bets, but I'm not willing to to talk about it uh, because I don't want to be blamed for for uh, uh, the next run. Mm. Just thinking um, in the big picture of the global economic history, back in the early 70s, America um, 
spent a lot of money on a war that that was a that um, was painful, and the oil price surged, and people wrote off America as an economic power, and it was going to be Japan, but it, it came back. Do you think, in the long run, um, this will damage America's economy fatally, or will it will it come back and still be the um, reserve currency and the the, the thing the the standard that everyone looks to. Well, no, I, I, I think the likelihood that America comes back as a reserve currency is very low. Uh, you know, to be a reserve currency, you have to have confidence that it's a good store of value. Anybody that used the dollar as a store of value has discovered it's not a good store of value. Uh, it's disappeared in front of their eyes. So uh, the new regime going forward is going to be based on the principle of diversification, wealth management. Uh, recognizing the dollar, as any other currency, is risky. Yeah. And I've been advocating trying to move to a new global reserve system, not reliant on any one or two countries, because even a dollar uh, euro or dollar euro yen system yeah. can be even more unstable than the dollar system. Uh, and an idea that Keynes talked about many years ago, uh, and in my book, Making Globalization Work, I, I describe how we could implement that new system. Uh, but I think that uh, just like sterling had its moment in the sun and has now faded, I think uh, that the dollar uh, will not be the single currency system, but the American economy will remain sufficiently large in the world economy that the dollar will be one of the key currencies. Mm. Professor Stiglitz, thank you very much. Thank I you. Appreciate it.